Welcome to the UT Southwestern Medical School Commencement Exercises for the Class of 2020. Would you all please stand and join me in the singing of our national anthem. Once again, I am delighted to welcome you all to the UT Southwestern Medical School Commencement Exercises for the Class of 2020. Although this commencement is unlike any other in the 77 years since the Southwestern Medical College was founded, in that we are not gathered together physically, we hope that all of our graduates are watching the ceremony with family and other loved ones. Commencement is always a memorable milestone event, but never more so than this year. Because of the COVID-19 global pandemic, what should have been a very special last semester of medical school for the class of 2020 has turned out to be a time of unprecedented disruption and challenge. Yet you, our students and our faculty have shown resilience and adaptability as you have found new ways to complete graduation requirements. And you, our students have shown inspiring generosity in coming forward to help us manage challenges in our clinical service because of COVID-19. As volunteers, medical students have assisted in numerous ways that range from screening visitors in our clinical buildings to staffing offices as backup to employees who cannot come to campus to providing childcare for the children of the frontline workers. This is a especially gratifying and reassuring that the spirit that motivated you to go to medical school is undiminished as you prepare now to begin a career of service as a physician. While we all wish that this global pandemic had never occurred, the reality is that life will often bring challenges that were unanticipated. And in this instance has shown new ways to apply resourcefulness, courage, and perseverance to the challenges in front of us. Putting COVID-19 aside for the moment, I would like to offer my personal congratulations and best wishes to you, our graduates. It seems a remarkably uh, short time ago that I had the privilege of welcoming you to UT Southwestern on your first day of medical school. I know that in the nearly four years since then, you have each grown through a remarkable breadth and depth of experiences in the classroom, in your patient care activities, learning from your patients, as well as caring for them. I hope that as you now enter the next important phase of your medical training, you will never forget the motivation that brought you to medical school. As a physician, you will have the privilege of helping patients and their families through some of their most profound life moments. You will witness and share heartwarming joy, but more often you will be there to guide patients with expertise and compassion at times of acutely painful vulnerability. I can tell you from my personal experience over the past four decades that as a physician, you are offered gifts of trust and human connection that few outside our profession ever experience. When you are tired, and you will be, don't lose sight of the things that you enjoy about being a doctor, and I trust that you will find gratification and renewed energy from the thanks that you will receive from your patients and their families. I urge you to always keep in mind that colleagues are there to help you, 
And as we have become increasingly aware of the problem of physician burnout, you should never hesitate to seek support when you need it. As you already know, we are living in a time of exciting biomedical discovery. These will transform our understanding of the causes of disease and our ability to treat, cure, and whenever possible, prevent them. This also means that as much as you have learned up till this time, it is only a fraction of it, what you will be learning in the years ahead. Through keeping up with scientific advances, from ever improving approaches to patient care, and most notably from your patients. I hope you will always be humbled and awed by the human capacity for hope, strength, and resilience that you will see in many of your patients, and that you will be motivated by their aspirations to ensure that they always receive the very best care possible from you and your colleagues. As each of you follows whatever path you end up pursuing within medicine, I wish you the very best. I hope that your four years at UT Southwestern have deepened and strengthened the values and ideals that brought you to medical school, and that you will always be guided by them in the years ahead. At this point, I would like to recognize the commencement marshals as representatives of the medical school faculty. But first, a word about the faculty. Our faculty form the heart and soul of UT Southwestern. They are the ultimate source of our strength in carrying out our mission, and their dedication and accomplishments bring renown to UT Southwestern, the city of Dallas, and the state of Texas. Through research, the faculty create new knowledge that provides the basis for breakthroughs in the prevention and treatment of disease. As clinicians, they provide exemplary medical care to all who come to us for help. And especially important to our graduates, the faculty educate and train those who come to UT Southwestern to learn the science and practice of medicine. Traditionally, commencement begins with an academic procession uh, in which the faculty lead the graduating students. And the marshals are members of the faculty whom the students have honored by electing them to lead the students in that academic procession. We have had to forego the procession this year, but it is my pleasure to introduce the marshals as part of this virtual commencement exercise. The students will be hearing from them directly in the second part of this video version of the 2020 commencement. This year's marshals are Dr. Rini Abraham, an associate professor in the Department of Internal Medicine, Dr. Tamara McGregor, an associate professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine, Dr. Peter Michael Lee, an assistant professor in the Department of Cell Biology, Dr. Kinde Odeidosu, an assistant professor in the Department of Internal Medicine, Dr. Mary Jane Pearson, a professor in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and Dr. Heidi Roman, an assistant professor in the Department of Pediatrics. There is another group I would also like to recognize at this time, the faculty and staff in the Office of Student Affairs. They have worked closely with the students to contribute to their education and medical school experience in countless ways, large and small. Most recently, to offset the disruption and disappointments caused by COVID-19, this group has worked tirelessly and creatively to transform Match Day in March and now Commencement in May into virtual experiences that the students will remember with pleasure and pride. This group includes the Dean of Students, Dr. Angela Mahalik, Associate Deans, Dr. Blake Barker, Dr. Shauna Nesbitt, and Dr. Melanie Solisto, and Ms. Susie Smith, Director of Student Life and the Brian Williams MD Student Center. They too will be addressing the students in the second part of this video, and I know that I speak on behalf of all the graduates in extending a heartfelt thank you to each of them for everything they have done to support the class of 2020 over the past four years. It is now my pleasure to introduce our 2020 commencement keynote speaker, Dr. Roy Wilson, president of Wayne State University in Detroit. I'm especially grateful that Dr. Wilson joins us today, knowing how deeply impacted his community of Detroit has been by the COVID-19 pandemic. As president of Wayne State since 2013, Dr. Wilson's guiding vision has been to transform that university into a preeminent 
public urban research institution. And one of his top strategic priorities has been to improve the pipeline of underrepresented students trained in biomedical sciences. Prior to becoming president of Wayne State, Dr. Wilson served as deputy director for strategic scientific planning and program coordination at the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities of the National Institutes of Health. Over the course of his career, he has also served as Vice President for Health Sciences and Dean of the School of Medicine at Creighton University, as President of Texas Tech University Health Science Centers here in Texas, and as Chancellor of the University of Colorado, Denver, and Chair of the Board of Directors of the University of Colorado, Colorado Hospital Anschutz Medical Campus. Trained as an ophthalmologist, his research has focused on glaucoma and blindness in populations in West Africa, the Caribbean, and urban communities in the United States. He received his undergraduate degree from Allegheny College in Pennsylvania and his medical degree from Harvard Medical School. He stayed at Harvard for residency uh, and training in ophthalmology, and following that, completed a master's in epidemiology from the University of California, Los Angeles. His many honors and distinctions include election to the National Academy of Medicine and the American Ophthalmological Society. He has served as a member of numerous NIH committees and advisory councils on eye disease and on health disparities. He is the recent past chair of the Association of American Medical Colleges Board of Directors and currently serves as co-chair of the NIH Director's National Advisory Committee on Diversity in the Biomedical Research Workforce. We are honored to have Dr. Wilson as our 2020 commencement keynote speaker. What an astonishing two months we've been through. Life as we knew it has been totally upended by the coronavirus. I offer my sincere sympathies to all who have either personally contracted the virus or have had a loved one affected. I know that commencement is a special time for new doctors. It was for me and for my parents 40 years ago. But honestly, I don't remember one single thing from that big, momentous day. This current crisis is a difficult one for sure, but it will ultimately pass. And as you get older and established in your careers, I suspect that you'll not forget this time in history this particular day, this particular commencement. I want to thank Dr. Podolsky for the invitation to address you today. It is an honor for me to do so, even without an audience sitting in front of me. I know you are all watching remotely, and I doubt if any of you are in caps and gowns, but I decided this occasion and your accomplishment was worthy of dressing in my full regalia. After all, there are certain things we cannot control and certain things that we can. It's up to all of us collectively to make this commencement spectacular for you. So graduates, enjoy your accomplishment and remember this special day forever. As mentioned, I sat in your place exactly 40 years ago, although literally rather than virtually. Since then, my career path has taken a few unanticipated turns, and among other things, I've had the privilege of leading two comprehensive universities. These experiences have provided me some perspectives on being a doctor, some of which may be a bit different from what you've heard previously. The first perspective has to do with identity. At the 2018, annual meeting of the AAMC during my chair's keynote address, I enthusiastically confessed that I absolutely loved my time in medical school. I remarked that to be able to look out into the future and know with certainty that I was going to have a career where I could so positively impact people and also attain financial security was exhilarating. I feel that same exhilaration now as I did then. Because once you've accepted your MD diploma, you're never going to not be a doctor again. I've come to realize that being a doctor is not just a profession. It's an identity. After more than 15 years of leading one or another university, I am still a doctor. 
I recall once being in a public waiting room where someone came out and called for, Mr. Wilson? I didn't respond and continued to be oblivious to my name being called multiple times until someone came up to nudge me. Up to then, I associated Mr. Wilson with my dad, and I hate to admit it because all of you are too young to have watched him on TV in the 1960s, but your parents might be able to relate. Mr. Wilson, the crabby next door neighbor on Dennis the Menace. I had become Dr. Wilson, externally to the world, but also internally within my own psyche. It's a strong identity, an identity with so much imbued in it. Privilege, respect, opportunity. My advice, embrace that identity. I'll come back to that later. The second has to do with how special you are from an educational perspective. You know, prior to being a university president at a comprehensive university, my interactions with learners were medical students, residents, or fellows. If these folks are who you are surrounded by on a daily basis, it's easy to lose perspective on how difficult it is for an individual to navigate the educational system to the point of obtaining a terminal degree. That's not the typical or usual experience. Far from it. The university for which I am currently president, Wayne State University, is a public urban research university, one of three in Michigan classified as a national university with very extensive research, or what's called R1 University. It's nationally known, particularly its professional schools, but it's otherwise a fairly typical public urban university. More typical, in fact, than some of the schools I was privileged to attend. The sad fact, and this is true not only of Wayne State, but of most universities in the country, is that the vast majority of students who start as freshmen don't graduate and get an undergraduate degree in four years, and many not even in six years. The reasons for these students stopping out are not complex. They're short, $250 to register for next semester classes. They can't get federal financial aid because their parents, or more likely parent, can't or won't fill out the necessary FAFSA forms. They're homeless, and finding food and shelter takes precedence of getting an education. In Southeast Michigan alone, there are 700,000 people with some college but no degree in the last 15 years. 13,000 of these went to Wayne State for some amount of time. This is a reality for students of all racial and ethnic identities, but it's particularly stark for underrepresented minority students. When I was in junior high school, I used to eat and sleep with a basketball in my hands. Like many black males growing up in inner city, I wanted to play college basketball and perhaps even professional basketball. Boy, was I ever dreaming. Although I did play college basketball, I realize now that my chances of going further and becoming a pro were inestimably low, so low as to be virtually non-existent. Here's what being a university president has taught me. You are the professional athletes of education. Out of approximately 16 million freshmen who started college with you eight years or so, a large proportion dreamed of being a doctor. Many of them woke up from their dreams after taking organic chemistry. Many others who managed to get straight A's through a pre-med curriculum designed to weed students out did not score high enough on the MCAT to merit medical school admission. A very small percentage of the cohort of 16 million students who started college with you are receiving their MD diploma this month. So you see, you are an educational rarity. Prior to being a university president, I had not previously appreciated how rare. But remember, you are not here because it's your right or because you're smarter than a lot of other who fell off the educational ladder. You are here because you are smart but you also worked hard, had the support of friends or family or both, and perhaps, just perhaps, the dice rolled the right way for you. The point is, 
When you're down and feeling miserable because of student debt, long work hours, when you feel burnt out, disillusioned with how medicine has changed or whatever, please view your personal circumstance through a wider lens. The education and training you've received are remarkable and you have an opportunity to have a meaningful, fulfilling impact on people's lives and on society that few people can only dream of. To be clear, I'm not trivializing the stresses of being a doctor, particularly a new one in clinical training or biomedical research. But these will be more than upset by the incredible opportunities that will undoubtedly unfold because you are so special. Embrace your opportunities. You're special, so do something special. The third perspective I've gained is the importance and joy of the arts and humanities. One of the unanticipated perks of being a university president, besides the university house I get to live in, has been the opportunity to engage deeply with the arts and humanities. In fact, I now believe that the educational pathway to medical school is much too narrowly focused on science. During my pre-med college days, I recall being so intimidated at the prospect of having to take physics that I took it at a local university in the summer so I could focus on just this one subject. As for calculus, to this day, I'm not sure how I passed it, though I am acutely aware of the fact that I never would have been provided the opportunity to become a doctor had I not. Of course, I'm exaggerating a bit, a bit for effect. After all, science is a fundamentally important conceptual underpinning for medicine, and I personally think of myself as a scientist. But it is only one leg of a three-legged stool, with social and behavioral sciences being the second leg and the arts and humanities the third. I more fully appreciate now how important the arts and humanities are as a foundation for medicine, let alone for enhancing life more broadly. They will make you a better doctor. My advice, as you venture into the next phase of your medical training and of your life, embrace the arts and humanities. Not only are they fundamental to the preparation of physicians, but they are also fundamental to preserving humanism in our profession and in balancing the pleasures of life. I would like to conclude by returning to something I started with. That is our identity in medicine. Perhaps there is no time that more poignantly illustrates this identity than the current time. There is no other way to adequately explain it. The heroism being displayed by our frontline healthcare providers in a war against a deadly virus in which personal comforts and even safety are subordinated to the pursuit of mitigating illness and saving lives. They are making profound personal sacrifices for a larger societal benefit because they can make a difference. That's what is expected of them and it's ingrained in their identity as doctors. Watching our doctors and medical students at Wayne State during this time has been inspirational, and it's occurring in every community throughout this country. I am profoundly proud of them and of you. Earlier, I recounted a rather trivial personal story of identification with being a doctor, the Mr. Wilson rather than Dr. Wilson story. But on a more serious note, each of you, as have I, will be confronted with some life-altering event, experience, decision that indelibly inscribes in your psyche, I am a doctor. My personal story involves my mother. She died in her early 50s due primarily to complications of lung cancer. As reports of her condition worsening reached me in Boston, I left my residency clinic to hurry home to Maryland to be with her. When I saw her in the hospital, I knew that there was nothing else that could be done to save her and insisted that she be discharged to home. By this time, 
She was suffering from hepatic encephalopathy and floating in and out of consciousness. But she had a few good moments. One afternoon, my father bathed her, dressed her in a nice nightgown, and tucked her into bed to rest. Knowing the end was likely near, I spent time with her, holding hands, patiently waiting for periods of lucidity so that we could communicate with each other. During her final moment of lucidity, she uttered my name, looked directly at me, and whispered a final message of advice. Then she had a look of peace on her face as she took her last breath. I know that you're all probably wondering, well, what was the advice? Let me just say for now that I'm still working through it. Perhaps it will be a topic for another commencement speech in the future. The most difficult thing I ever did in my life, and yet at the same time the most rewarding and privileged, was to be able, as a doctor, to pronounce my mother dead and sign her death certificate. She was thereby spared the indignity of having to go to an emergency room where an unknown doctor would make that declaration. My final image of her as she was transported directly to the funeral home was that of a beautiful, peaceful, and dignified woman. Graduates, you will soon have that moment when you fully realize that you are now a real doctor, when the awesome responsibility and incredible opportunity of that identity will come into full display, embrace that moment. It will become a part of you forever. Congratulations, doctors. Thank you so very much for allowing me to be part of your special day. It's been an honor. Thank you, Dr. Wilson, for your memorable remarks. And we thank you also for all that you are doing to improve the health and well-being of the broader community of Detroit and the nation as a whole. It is traditional that each year at commencement, one of our graduating medical students receives special recognition as the recipient of the Hodin Award from the Southwestern Medical Foundation. This award was established to honor human understanding and medical wisdom, two cornerstones that guide medical education and are essential to every successful doctor-patient encounter. The Southwestern Medical Foundation not only created the Hodin Award, but the foundation established the medical school itself in 1943 and served as the school's sole support until 1949 when it became part of the University of Texas system. Notwithstanding that uh, transition to the University of Texas system, the Southwestern Medical Foundation has continued to serve as a major contributor and supporter of UT Southwestern throughout the years, and the foundation serves as a vital link between the medical school and the Dallas community. To represent this ongoing connection, I am pleased to introduce Dr. Richard Hoffman, a member of the Foundation's Board of Trustees and a 1975 graduate of our medical school. Dr. Hoffman lives in Denver, where he has served as the Chief Epidemiologist for the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment and as the Chief Medical Officer for the State of Colorado under two governors. He, reserved, he received his undergraduate degree from Stanford University and, as mentioned, his medical degree from UT Southwestern. Following medical school, Dr. Hoffman started on the path to become a surgeon, but decided to change fields and ultimately completed a residency in family medicine at Duke University. He found his true calling in epidemiology, and while working for the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, he also completed a Master's of Public Health degree from Johns Hopkins University. Dr. Hoffman grew up in Dallas, and he and his mother generously established the Hoffman Family Center for Genetics and Epidemiology at UT Southwestern in 2015. We are very pleased to have Dr. Hoffman as the presenter of this year's Hodin Award. Greetings, graduates. It was 45 years ago that I graduated from UT Southwestern, and now I send my congratulations to each of you on this well-deserved milestone and accomplishment. We are filming this from my home in Denver, 
and while I wish we could meet in person, I am glad to send greetings to you wherever you may be at this moment. This is an historic opportunity to learn and practice what it means to protect the health of our patients, our community, and the general public. We are entrusted with this obligation, and now we have an opportunity to do this well. During difficult times, we find ourselves looking for answers, looking for data, looking for solutions. You have been trained by one of the great academic institutions to be caring doctors, innovators, and problem solvers. I am glad you have chosen the field of medicine as your profession. It is a noble calling. It is fundamental to solving both the old and the new health challenges we face. As you enter the practice of medicine during a crisis in our community and, the, and in the entire world, take heart. Your medical school was begun in the middle of World War II, and it faced tremendous challenges then. Since its beginnings, UT Southwestern has been known for its medical and scientific progress and for the great education and training it provides. We rest assured that you, our graduates of 2020, have the training to continue this legacy. On behalf of Southwestern Medical Foundation's Board of Trustees, it is a great honor for me now to present this year's Ho Din Award. At the first meeting of the Board of Southwestern Medical College, the board voted to establish an award to recognize a graduating medical student who exemplifies the ideal physician, a student who possesses qualities embodied in all great physicians, the spirit of medical wisdom combined with human understanding. <clears throat> the Ho Din Award was first presented 77 years ago in 1943. Recipients of the award manifest a deep concern for the welfare of others and a boundless commitment to alleviate suffering. While only one student is chosen for the Ho Din Award, I want the graduates of the UT Southwestern Medical School Class of 2020 to know that you all represent this legacy. Now I would like to tell you something about this year's Ho Din Award winner, Ms. Priyanka Gar. Priyanka is a first-generation American. She grew up in Austin and attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She graduated with a 4.8 grade point average and earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Brain and Cognitive Sciences. Priyanka became an emergency medical technician as an undergraduate and was awarded the Sean Collier Medal for her service to the campus community. She was a student athlete who played on MIT's women's soccer team and won the New England men's and women's academic all-conference recognition in both 2012 and 2013. During her college years, she also gave back to her community by serving as the head coach for a local elementary school girls' soccer team. Priyanka maintained her outstanding academic record at UT Southwestern achieving a 4.0 GPA and selection into the Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Society as a junior medical student. She concurrently completed coursework for her Master of Public Health degree from the UT School of Public Health based in Houston. Priyanka has a determined and demonstrated passion for women's health. She founded the Health Advocacy Student Interest Group exposing students to the social, economic, and political determinants of health while creating opportunities to advocate for patients. She worked with Parkland Hospital to create a survey that assesses how lack of childcare creates a barrier to overall health care for women. This survey led to, a, it led to an innovative solution, a unique drop-off hospital-based daycare center at Parkland that is now under construction. Following graduation, Priyanka will begin an OB-GYN residency at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. I know that UT Southwestern is proud to count Priyanka among its distinguished graduates, and I know that the Southwestern Medical Foundation is pleased to present Priyanka with the 2020 Ho Den Award. Congratulations, Priyanka. Well done. Thank you to the Foundation for this huge honor. I'm grateful for the patients, mentors, 
and classmates who have helped me foster this Hoden spirit of compassion and service. I'm also humbled to represent this amazing, selfless, impressive graduating class. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, Dr. Hoffman, and congratulations to you, Priyanka. We all admire everything you have accomplished and contributed as a medical student, and we wish you all the best for your residency at Johns Hopkins and your career in obstetrics and gynecology in the years ahead. I am pleased to now introduce Dr. Andrew Lee, our Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Provost, and Dean of the Medical School. Dr. Lee is a plastic and reconstructive surgeon who is an international pioneer and leader in hand transplantation. Dr. Lee will now present the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. Dr. Podolsky, with the approval of the medical school faculty, I'm pleased to present to you these candidates who have completed the prescribed course of study and fulfilled all requirements of the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. They are, therefore, recommended for this degree. By virtue of the authority vested by the laws of the state of Texas in the Board of Regents of the University of Texas system and delegated by the board to me, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree for which you have been recommended with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereunto. Congratulations, doctors. I'm honored to present the following 226 candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. Carolyn Abe. Carol Abusab. Morgan Atkins. Vikas Agarwal. Vijay Agusala. Juno Ong, with distinction in research. Tochi Ajiwe. Dami Akin Mola Yami. Oyinda Mola Nicole Akin Seye. Ayan Alame, with distinction in research. Carolina Alexis Andrade. Lincoln Andre. Swathi Aria Padi. Caleb Quinn Ashbrook. Gautam Babu. Ashley Brooke Barasa. Aida Basirat. Roy Baskin. Daniel Nathan Beecham. Timothy Charles Benich. Nora Bismar. Benjamin Aaron Safier Blyberg, with distinction in research. Yushev Takshan Bordash, with distinction in quality improvement and patient safety. Maria Carolina Ox. Julia Shelton Brachik. Colin Seth Berger. Travis Melling Bullock. Zechariah Burns. Matthew David Knight. Timothy Field Carroll. Erica Lisbeth Castro. 
Baher Hassan Chamsadan with distinction in research. Donald Chun Lai Chang. Alice Mary Chang. Viet Chow. Lucy Chang, Oni Niachi Roshet Chidamia, Punya Chidayalu, Elias Choi, Vincent Chu with distinction in global health. Tina May K. Chu with distinction in quality improvement and patient safety. Jennifer Koyas. Justin Comer. Tyler James Couch. Zhang Hao Kui. Pooja Dasari, Justin Joe Davis, with distinction in research, Pamela Cristina Dela Cruz Rivera, MD, PhD, Ted Den, Daniel Campbell Dewey. Annalise Camille Doni, Brayden F. Saroff, Emanuela Chugudubebe Ekbanan, Hilary Evans, William Cameron Ford. Naomi Freeman, Sanjay Gadasali, Laura Gannon, Emily Gao, Finn Gao. Jason Gao, Whitney Tong Gao, Sandra Garcia, Priyanka Gar, Michael Andrew Gillespie. Matthew James Jillings, Lindsay Lee Graves, Jennifer Rose Geller, Alexander Bradley Quinn, Savannah Nicole Hampton. Gabriella Denise Hanko, Jonathan Richard Harder, Muhammad Hassan Harira, Fras Hassin, Bowen Ha, Catherine. Rachel Hepler, with distinction in research. Christine Ashley Henderson. Huang Kuang Ho. Lawrence Mai Huang. Ellie Hoagie. Cheng Hua Hong, 
Mark Andrew Hanralis, Sammy Monir Harani, Farzana Aisha Hossein, Sammy Omar Huari, Sharon Hulk Shell. William Sue, Emily Huang with distinction in research, Jordan Gregory Hughes with distinction in quality improvement and patient safety, Ryan Wayne Hunter, M.D., Ph.D., Rachel Joyce Hurst. Sabiha Rabia Hussein, Larry Kwa Huin, Chinoye Sharon Emo, Sham Andrew Conti, Mira Farzana Ayenger, with distinction in global health. Shayla V. Jane, with distinction in quality improvement and patient safety. Philip Cohen Jarrett III. Alice Chiang. Janice Chiang. Rhoda Chiao. Alicia Joseph, Rohan Balchandra Kanade, Nashika Karbari with distinction in research, Jacob Elias Corey, Julian Jing Wang Kim. Vinay Shailesh Kotamarti, Casey Kreutz, Amitha Kaushreshta, Jamel Thomas, Tran Bao Li, with distinction in research. Zhu Li with distinction in medical education. Kurt Leininger. Tara Lemons. Danielle Alexandra Lenahan. Chen Si Li. Daniel Lee, Tyler Leon, with distinction in quality improvement and patient safety. Yuan Leon, Maria Luiza Lima, Timothy Lin. Terence Liu, Chelsea Orlando Lockyer, Andriana Chantel Love, Rachel Liu, Amy Kiyutron Liu, with distinction in community health. Matthew Timothy McLean with distinction in research. Sonakshi Manjunath. Jack Riley Martinez. Kiera Mason. Christian Travis Wade Maxwell 
with distinction in research. Alexander Thomas Mazal. Nathan Joseph McCammon. Vidya Menon. Ali Abbas Mohammadi, with distinction in research. Kelsey Morgan. James Munoz. Robert Louis Myers III. A.J. Mohan Narayanan. Anish Narayanan, with distinction in research. Duke Min Win. Ivy Win. Jacqueline Win. Anna Patricia Nino, with distinction in global health. Micah Eileen Nishigaki. David Nishman. Sohair Sayadali Nurani. Susanna Oud. Santochi Ifeingwa Okafu. Sean Okichuku Apara. Chiamaka Sharice Anwibo. Javier Ordonez. Jesse Ortega. Brian Coombs Ostler. Paul Eugene Pariso III. Rishi Prakash Patel. Shubhati Paul, with distinction in research. Matthew Pettis. Jamie Lynn Paff. Hiep Steve Fan. Vonita Popat, with distinction in research. Alex Patorf. Smurthy Prasad, with distinction in research. Bilal Sayi Kadri. Kirthi Ayalapu Reddy. Sumath Reddy, with distinction in global health. Shannon Colleen Reinert. Heather Elizabeth Renfro. Oswaldo Francisco Renteria. Suhan Janine Reyes. Juan Reyna. Lucas Richardson. Joshua Reekers. Edgar David Rodriguez. Maria Guadalupe Ruiz. Natalie Shawaker, with distinction in research. David Schweitzer. Arkavan Sharifi. Georgia Helena Abrantes Shelton. Bailey Shepherd. Rachel Naughty 
Schober. Matthew Jaching Siebert. Josie Simmons. Corey Sean Smith. Wesley James Smith. Alwyn Soma Sandaran. Shan Su with distinction in research. Sharon Sun. Owes Nasser Syed. Katie Ray Long Tai. Andrea Tan with distinction in research. Oliver Taylor. Ali Shah Tajani, Benjamin Galicia, Adriana Anais Torres, Andrew Huang Tran, Wei Sang Sui. Derek Ude, Emilia Georgieva Ushiba, Caitlin Claire Nagandi Valentine, Anita Vasudevan, Fortino Velasco the Fourth. Yarlani Vipulanadin, Aishwarya Vishwanath, with distinction in quality improvement and patient safety. Kevin Vu, with distinction in research. Morat Walsh, with distinction in global health. Richard Wang. Charles Wana, Jacob J. Welch, Jenna Danielle Wiles, Haley Elizabeth Williams, Daniel Wong. Ashley Garland Wallace Wu, Lawrence Wu with distinction in research, Danny Shu, Alex Yang, Tina Yan. Ahana Yogesh, Amen Jonas, Helena Nina Yu, with distinction in research, Samuel Adele Yunan, Sarah Waishan Yun. Serena Zadu, Alice Zan, Scott Zhou, Michael Zhou, with distinction in global health. Congratulations to all the graduates. It is a long-standing UT Southwestern tradition to have the president of the Dallas County Medical Society administer the physician's oath to our new doctors. This year's president is Dr. Mark Casanova, 
a graduate of the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston, and an internist at Baylor Scott and White Health with special interests in clinical ethics and palliative care. Dr. Casanova will lead the graduates in reciting the oath and any physicians among the relatives and friends with our students who wish to renew their vow are invited to recite it as well. I ask our graduates to raise their right hand and repeat with me. I pledge the following as an expression of the spirit in which I will strive to practice medicine, to promote health and to relieve suffering in both the living and the dying, to approach all my patients with integrity, candor, empathy, and respect, to honor the confidences entrusted to me, to be a student and always, and to remain conscious of my limitations, to place the welfare of the patients above personal gain and to protect patients from improper care, to respond always in an emergency, to improve health care for the underserved and to work to change those conditions in society that threaten the health of the community, to withdraw from active practice when I am no longer capable of fulfilling these pledges, to keep the promise of Hippocrates, above all, do no harm. I make these pledges solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Now that all of our graduates have received their degrees and the faculty and special guests have been recognized for their important contributions, I would like for us to pay tribute to others whose roles have been vital in bringing us to this auspicious occasion. The philanthropic community of Dallas, the state of Texas, and the federal government have all provided essential resources that enable UT Southwestern to educate its students and to recruit and retain the faculty who have taught them. But even these altogether would not have been enough. There had to be as well an undergirding of support for these talented and fortunate young men and women. Financial support in many cases, but even more importantly, intellectual and emotional support for them to pursue their dreams and goals of becoming physicians. The unsung heroes and heroines who provided that support, often at great sacrifice, but always with love and confidence, deserve our appreciation and respect as much as anyone here. And so to honor those who made it possible for these graduates to reach this important milestone in their lives, I would like to recognize all the parents, grandparents, spouses, brothers and sisters, children, and other special relatives and friends of our graduates. All of us are very grateful to you. This concludes our commencement ceremony. I know that our new graduates, like their predecessors, will bring honor to our school and to the profession of medicine. To the graduates, our newest alumni, and to your family and friends, UT Southwestern extends sincere congratulations and our very best wishes. Good afternoon, colleagues, fellow physicians of the UT Southwestern Medical School class of 2020. Today, we mark together a moment you've long dreamt about, one that each of us among the faculty fondly remembers, the day you crossed the threshold into what, for us, continues to be the greatest profession that the world has to offer. As you take this step, symbolically and from your own homes, it is no less real than if we had been able to share it together in the Gooch Auditorium and the Meyerson Symphony Hall. It is no less earned, and I know it comes with no less vibrant a rainbow of emotions. Just as we know you are fully prepared to take this step across that threshold, we also know it comes with its own peculiar set of expectations, apprehensions, and even fears. They range from the small, what will I say when someone calls me doctor and I can't just dismiss it with, oh, I'm just a medical student? You were never just a student, by the way. To the late night worries, how will I respond when my pager goes off my first code? You will do your best 
and it will be enough, and you will not be there alone. To the sublime, when a patient grabs your hand, locks eyes with you, and says, thanks, doc, I don't know where I'd be without you. I have much more to share with you about what you have accomplished and what's to come, but there are a few things we need to discuss first. The hooding ceremony is a ritual that dates back six to 700 years as medieval European scholars welcomed new colleagues into their professions. The hoods and gowns served a practical purpose at those times, to keep you warm in drafty cold stone buildings. It was also personal, a gesture from those who know well what you've accomplished, who have walked the same path, the same late nights and early mornings to cross the same threshold you cross today. On behalf of the faculty, the mentors, the advisors, the educators, deans, and dozens of staff who work quietly behind the scenes on your behalf, we sincerely grieve for not being able to celebrate your success today in the way that we had all planned. But we are no less with you today as we would have been if these were different times. Thank you for your patience, grace, and selflessness, particularly today, as we all struggle to find ways to convey that we know this virtual ceremony comes with a hint of disappointment and perhaps even pain. We are all looking for the words which will surely become clearer in the months and years ahead and we'll look back and realize how we should have shepherded this moment differently with the words we wish we could have had at the time. Words like extraordinary, unprecedented, and thank you may be the best we can muster right now as we, along with you, try to make sense of it all. For me, I'm sure I'll have those thoughts immediately after this taping, later tonight and in the coming days. As I have searched for the words, I found myself coming back to a phrase introduced to me by another new colleague of yours, Dr. Preston Wiles, Sawubona. It comes from the language of the Zulu tribe, a world that could not be any more different than that of my own or Dr. Wiles, but whose meaning speaks to our common humanity. It is a word that does not have a sufficient counterpart in the American language and culture. It's a greeting shared between members of the Zulu tribe akin to our, hello, how are you? But with greater depth. It is translated as, I see you. You are important to me and I value you. Though our language may not possess the right words, we all know the warmth of being seen and understood. Colleagues of the class of 2020, Sawubona, I see you, we see you, and you are no less on our minds and in our hearts today than if we were together. The hooding ceremony is our opportunity as faculty to say, I see you, and your opportunity to say, Shikoba. It is good to be seen and enjoy the moment where your accomplishments are recognized, appreciated, and marked by hugs, cheers, and of course, pomp and circumstance. Friends and families, we also see you as we know that our own accomplishments were not solely our own, but were a culmination of years of support and sacrifice from people like you who loved us. This is your day too, and you are important to us as well. Through television, social media, phone calls, FaceTime, and Zoom meetings, so many Zoom meetings, we have all been conducting a conversation about what it is to have shared sacrifice, what the benefits, responsibilities, and limits are to living in a society and fulfilling each of our roles in a social contract in times of uncertainty. These are heady discussions that will also crystallize over time. But despite the current uncertainty, we thank each of you, colleagues, friends, and family, for your donation to this social trust in the interest of the health and well-being of others, nearly all complete strangers that will never know to thank you for what you have given up. We know what this day meant to you and your families as we know what it meant to us. Thank you. This is true humanism at its best. For the next few minutes, let's embrace the veil of COVID-19 and focus not on what you have lost, but what you've accomplished and the bright future that lay ahead. First, despite world events, you have permission to experience joy today and celebrate what you've accomplished. As my friend and my and your colleague, Dr. Melanie Slistio says, medicine is hard because it should be. No one wants to be the doctor who took it easy uh, during medical school or residency. And I know it has not been easy. 
You have put in the extra hours when you were tired. You have overcome self-doubt. You have mastered knowledge of innumerable biological systems. You have held surgical retractors for untold amounts of time. You have missed experiences with your friends and family who could only say, wish you were here. And you have been witness to pain and suffering. And because of that, because you stepped up to the plate when you needed to, you are ready for what comes next. You are ready to help during that emergency and feel comfortable in your own skin when that first person calls you doctor. You sought the joy of the purpose-driven life, and it has been all worthwhile. You should be experiencing not just joy, but pride in an immense personal accomplishment. I don't mean the pride or hubris that past hooded scholars have warned us about for millennia. I mean the kind of pride that's more akin to an awareness that you have accomplished something many could not, by virtue of ability, effort, and perhaps most importantly, opportunity that the dominoes somehow fell in your direction and you capitalized on that privilege through grit and determination. This is the pride that will serve as a shield to future temptations and distractions and will frame your decisions continually in search of not just what is hard, but what brings you purpose. We're all now acutely aware of how quickly life can change. However the dominoes may fall in your future, a life spent in search of purpose, as you have done while a medical student, will serve you and your patients well. Please allow yourself the opportunity to experience that thrill today. There are many privileges you will enjoy as a physician. You will be secure. And yes, I do mean financially secure. While millions are desperately finding ways to keep food on the table, you will continue to be deemed essential in good times and bad. Though I know you did not join this profession for profit, it is important you know that you benefit from a security that others do not have. And it may not have been so had the dominoes not fallen in your direction and had you not capitalized on that opportunity. Gratitude for what you were given and what you have accomplished free you to do good and give back. You will also have daily direct evidence that your work has meaning. No matter your specialty, you will have the opportunity to know that your craft, your understanding of biology, and the latest scientific advancements change the trajectory of a person's life. You will have an endless well of perspective. Through witness of suffering, you will have fertile opportunity not to dismiss your own struggles, but to give them context. This will serve as a lifeline during your own challenging times. Patients who endure will inspire you and fuel you with a vicarious form of resilience. And in a few cases, you will find mutual support among your patients. When my mother passed away from ovarian cancer this past fall, I can't tell you how healing it was to share that with a few of my patients who happened to be experiencing a similar loss at the same time. It was healing both for them and for me. We both needed to be seen. A privilege that, in my opinion, is often overlooked is that uh, through being a physician, you will know yourself. Because it is hard, you will know your strengths and weaknesses. And because you are in search of purpose, you will define what it is that uniquely inspires you and motivates you. These are questions that are difficult to ask oneself honestly and will take years more to refine. But because the dominoes fell in your direction and you stepped up to the plate, you will find the answers. Each of these privileges is ephemeral. You will never quite capture them, but you will remain close to them through two key lifelong journeys. First, care for yourself. You are only human after all and subject to the same frailties as your human patients. We were just beginning, in my opinion, on an honest national conversation about the health of healthcare workers when COVID-19 brought it all to vivid national attention. Do as you would have your patients do for themselves. This is also not easy, and it will take the same deliberate focus and effort that afforded you today's celebration. You will have failures, but your capacity to forgive yourself, process the failure in a healthy way, and recover will only bring you closer to serving your patients' needs. Your patients will know, intuitively, when they experience that warm feeling of being seen by you and it will bring you closer to knowing yourself. Lastly, seek the servant heart. Mahatma Gandhi said, 
the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. We are not all Gandhi, though his is a noble aspiration. Perhaps more direct and relatable, Muhammad Ali said, the service you do for others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. Though as you cross that threshold, you do enter a profession that enjoys some privilege. If you make the choices in a way that support your own health while seeking the servant heart, you will find yourself exactly where you want it, a life rich with challenge, purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. Even if a pandemic had not upended our lives, you would encounter many changes in the coming months. You will get your first real pager number. Former residents, faculty, and even deans may ask you to call them by their first names. You'll enter orders that someone will actually trust and act upon. I remember my first page in my first order for acetaminophen. I felt a chill in my spine as I clicked sign. A lot will happen, and who gave your graduation and hooding speeches, and what they said will fade into the distance. I don't remember who spoke at my graduation ceremony, but not for the reasons you might expect. Mine was canceled too by a bomb threat. There was no bomb, and there was no one who was hurt, but these were post 9-11 times, and well, you know the phrase, out of an abundance of caution. The school did the right thing and did an admirable job of recreating an abbreviated ceremony on campus, but it was not the same. But it did not matter, and it made our accomplishment that day no less great. I was on a Zoom happy hour with my two best medical school friends last week, a psychiatrist and intensive care physician. We reflected on what event was most meaningful for us professionally during medical school, and we all settled on the same event, Hurricane Katrina. After Katrina, thousands of homeless New Orleanians came to Houston when we were third-year medical students. The lucky few had family to stay with, many did not and the Astrodome was quickly converted into a makeshift shelter, clinic, and hospital. I remember volunteering there, as many of you have volunteered these last few weeks. And my experiences there remain a touchstone I often refer to consciously and unconsciously in my daily work. A building filled with people, most of whom did not look like me, did not enjoy the same privileges as me, but desperately needed help and to be seen. I did not feel like much help as a third year student, and perhaps I wasn't, but that was not the real significance of my being there. What I witnessed that, uh, was that steadily over several days, through the work of community leaders and physicians, chaos, fear, and suffering were replaced with order, calm, and mercy. I was on the sidelines then, but it remains a reference point that educated me on what it was to serve, to have purpose, to lead, and to be a physician. Years later, I came across the words that made sense of it all. Mercy is the willingness to enter into the chaos of others, theologist James Kennan. And the next week, as a fellow physician, I also don't know what the future holds. What I have planned is to reacquaint myself with ICU medicine in case the worst happens and I'm called upon to help. I don't know if I'll be needed, but I want to be there on the front lines if needed just as I know you do as well. You were all old enough to remember 9-11 and socially conscious enough to understand the historical context and importance of Katrina. Perhaps those will also be your touchstones, but I submit to you another option. This may be your moment. You may feel you are on the sidelines as I was post Katrina, but it will be a reference point, perhaps the reference point for your entire careers. As you enter into a profession that may, at this moment, seem chaotic and fraught with uncertainty, you are also bearing witness to the purest form of our role in society. You are seeing regular human beings, like you and like me, who happened to have the dominoes fall the right way, who capitalized on that good fortune, continue to step up to the plate on behalf of the health of complete strangers. I cannot imagine a more inspiring time to become a physician and I cannot imagine a group of people who are more prepared to meet the needs of patients waiting to be seen. Rest assured that you are valued, you are important, and you are prepared. And we see you. Congratulations and welcome to the greatest profession.
And now it is my pleasure to introduce to you your next speaker, someone you know well, and we are all proud to call a colleague, the winner of the Iatros Award. As you know, the Iatros Award was established by the graduating class of 1984 and is the only award selected by the graduating class. The class of 1984 named the award the Iatros using the Greek word for physician, with the recipient being an individual who most emulates the complete qualities of a physician in the eyes of their peers. I want to extend my personal gratitude to this year's recipient for his steady, patient, and thoughtful leadership during these turbulent weeks. Thank you for your service, Dr. Dami Akingmola Yemi. First and foremost, I would like to thank the class of 2020 for selecting me as the recipient of the 2020 IATROS Award. Every member of this class deserves this award, as I have seen, heard, or read how much you all are committed to your patients and community. However, I am truly humbled for this recognition, and it means the world to me. I will always strive to live up to the expectations of the IATROS Award. I am also grateful for the opportunity to address the class today during our virtual commencement. I would like to use this opportunity to appreciate the Associate Deans of Student Affairs, Dr. Barker, Dr. Mahalik, Dr. Nesbitt, and Dr. Solicio, faculty, mentors, and of course, the Queen of UT Southwestern, Suzette Smith. I am impressed by your unrelenting effort every day to provide the best educational and non-educational experiences to the medical students. To our parents, families, and significant others who have played tremendous roles and supported us throughout our medical school journey, we also appreciate you. We cannot thank you all enough for all you've done. The last semester of medical school is a semester every fourth year medical student looks forward to. It is a time to finally take a break from the rigor of medical school and catch up on, on the fun things and life events that have been put on hold for at least the last four years. It is a time to schedule weddings, vacations, and trip. A time to learn new skills or brush up old skills. A time to sit back and reflect on how far we've come and what lies ahead. Ultimately, it is a time to do whatever one desires to do. It is no news that COVID-19, which I think should be renamed as COVID-20, disrupted our plans in some fashion, most especially match day and graduation ceremonies. But what is certain is that it could not hold us from getting our MD degree and becoming the best physician that we all aspire to be. So I say congratulations, class of 2020, the class with the perfect vision for this amazing accomplishment. I cannot think of a better time to start our residency training than this period when the nation needs us the most. Permit me to share with you very briefly some advice that I have accumulated over the years from mentors as we embark on this next phase of our career called residency. There is no doubt that the intern year will be extremely busy as we transition from being, I am just a medical student to resident physician, taking on the role of the primary provider for patients. I haven't experienced what intern year is like, but I have been told that because of the busy nature of this year, you may begin to approach your day as just trying to get through the task of the day or trying to get by each day. Definitely, you want to get through your task for each day, but you should also develop the habit of finding time to learn at least one new thing every day. This learning can come from the patients that you take care of, from the didactics provided at your various residency programs, and from the many educational materials available. By developing this habit in the midst of the busy nature of residency, it will become part of you and you will eventually develop an arsenal of medical knowledge. Secondly, remember you are a person first, then a doctor as you start residency. You are not only defined by your MD degree or your other educational accomplishments. Remember your daughters, sons, grandsons, granddaughters, mothers, fathers, 
spouses, athletes, musicians, magicians, and so on. I implore you to find the time to do what you love outside of medicine. Find the time to spend with your loved ones. Find the time to develop new interests and hobbies. Most especially, find the time to recharge. I know this is not new information as we all have heard this over and over again in medical school and also may have provided this same advice to others. However, the next few years will be vital to truly practice this. Lastly, I want to encourage everyone to be great ambassadors of UT Southwestern as we go to our respective residency program, just like those that have come before us. UT Southwestern graduates have created strong reputations across the country that many of us have benefited from and we owe it to those coming after us to continue to uphold the strong reputation. Class of 2020, congratulations once again. I have had a wonderful experience being part of this class and would not have wished to go through the last four years with any other group of people. I cannot wait to see our great contributions to this world and medicine. I look forward to seeing many of you, if not all, as your schedule will permit at our 10 year reunion. I will miss you all. At this time, you will hear briefly from the students selected Class of 2020 Commencement Marshals. These individuals were selected by the class to honor and recognize as playing impactful roles in our medical education here at UT Southwestern. The selection process was rigorous as it involved many nominations of faculty members and then voting on these nominations to finally select the six marshals. Although they will not play the traditional roles of commencement marshals today, they will be sharing few words with the class of 2020 as we embark on the next phase of our training. Class of 2020, congratulations. Even though I cannot be there in person, I'm, I'm definitely there in spirit. So for family or those who do not know me, I am Rini Abraham and I am an internal medicine physician and I have been blessed to be the internal medicine clerkship director for these students. And I know this day is not how you, any of you, imagined it to be without the pomp and circumstance of the Meyerson Symphony Center. But in, by no means does that diminish what this day means and all that you have accomplished. If I could leave one final word of encouragement, it would be to remember your mission. Uncertainty and the pursuit of achievement can often cloud our purpose. I want you just to pause and think about why you started this journey um, and path to a career in medicine in the first place. For the promise and the power of true healing. So class of 2020, I'm so excited for what the next chapter holds and all that you have to offer. We know that you are going to be great. Hi, it's Saxa Adusu. Thank you once again for selecting me as one of your commencement marshals. A couple of words of advice. Taking care of patients is a team effort. Please don't be afraid to ask for help, not only from other physicians, but from other colleagues, such as nurses, social workers, case managers, just to name a few. Um, another thing, residency is gonna be challenging, but rest assured, those weeks, months, and years will go by really fast. And your training and education here at UT Southwestern has prepared you very well. Again, a big congratulations and I wish you success at your respective residencies. See you guys later. Now this is a groovy one. Congratulations class of 2020. This is Dr. McGregor laying in a field of blue bonnets. Uh, Parkland's in the background. Uh, I think there's fire ants here. Um, just wanted to say from all of us how proud we are of you, of all your hard work, 
of your energy and your enthusiasm, your, your joie de vivre, your humor, um, your silliness, your commitment to the care of our communities and of our world. And you keep us young and you keep us in love with medicine and in love with our patients. Um, don't feel defined by the difficulties you've encountered, but more by what you've accomplished and how you've overcome those difficulties. Y'all come back frequently. Don't forget us here, your family at Southwestern. Go forth and do great things. Congratulations. Hi to all the new physicians and esteemed guests. I'm Heidi Roman from the Department of Pediatrics, and I'm so honored to be here today as one of your graduation marshals. I send you my heartiest congratulations. I have a wish for you today. So Maya Angelou is quoted as saying that fear and hope cannot occupy the same space. Invite one to stay. This is a very hopeful time and a wonderful time as you embark on your career as a physician. It's a time to celebrate your accomplishments. It's also a time of great uncertainty and fear in the world. And my wish for all of you today as you embark on your careers is that you invite hope to stay during this time. Remember to be hopeful. Remember the wonder and honor that it is, the great privilege it is to be a physician. And I'm just so proud of you. Uh, congratulations on all your accomplishments. I just wanted to say that it has been an honor and a privilege to have made a contribution to your education. You will face new challenges as you head out for your residencies, but you guys are ready. You would not be where you are now if you weren't. The many things that you have learned here at UT Southwestern, among the most important is how to learn. You will of course need to learn much more as residents and fellows. Never doubt that you have what it takes to learn your craft and to be successful. I'm very proud to be part of the commencement for the class of 2020. I need to show you something here. This is a picture of me in the middle. This is my 1980 graduation from UT Southwestern. I hope that you are all just as proud and as healthy and as truly joyful as we all were back then. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I expect to hear great things from all of you.
Hello class of 2020. It has been my privilege to walk with you during your time here at UT Southwestern. I've seen your spirit in many wonderful events like orientation, white coat ceremony, and college's Olympics. On this day of your graduation, I would like to give you one piece of advice. Be mindful of the fact that you've begun the transition from mentee to mentor. You've had many mentors on this campus. Take the lessons learned from them and pay them forward to the mentees you will meet in the coming years. I give my best wishes to the class of 2020. So it was that we started at orientation and pre-op four years ago. Congratulations to the class on 2020 on graduating. You're now becoming physicians. Good luck and Godspeed to wherever you're going. We'll be thinking about you. I would like to congratulate the entire class of 2020 on behalf of all of the members of the Office of Medical Education. It has been our privilege to implement and to support a challenging curriculum which has prepared you for the next step in your training. You have mastered uh, this curriculum and have received your MD degrees. I can assure you that not only will you be well prepared for your residency programs and for future practices, but like the alumni before you, you will become leaders and role models in your communities. We are proud of you and we wish you distinguished and rewarding careers. Hey everybody, happy graduation day, we did it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the most incredible four years of medical school. It has been an absolute blessing and an honor to train alongside such intelligent and compassionate physicians. So best of luck in residency and beyond. God bless, and I cannot wait to see all of the incredible things that you do. Coming into medical school, I was scared of things like gunners and cutthroats and other weirdly violent terms that I had vaguely heard of. Um, but I very quickly realized that those weren't things I needed to be afraid of because of the culture of support here. And it's in that culture that I found some of my best friends, my fiance, our bridesmaids and groomsmen. And it's those people that got me through what I should have been afraid of really, like a little more formaldehyde exposure than expected and global pandemics. And so thank you to all of those people and congratulations to the class of 2020. Hey class of 2020, I just wanted to wish everyone a happy graduation. It's been a pleasure getting to know such an inspirational and talented group of people um, and I'm proud of everything that we've accomplished so far. Um, even though we can't celebrate in person today, I'm sending you all virtual hugs and well wishes. And I'm already looking forward to our reunion. And I gotta say, that was like take 20. Hey class of 2020, congratulations. Um, I can't imagine the last four years without you guys and I'm excited to watch us to continue to grow in residency. Good luck, keep in touch, and I'll see you at our reunion. Congratulations class of 2020. You are the future of medicine today. Hi everyone. I just wanted to say congratulations on achieving this significant milestone. Our journey together these past four years, while it has certainly been challenging at times, has been a really rewarding one. Even though this wasn't the graduation ceremony that we had all had envisioned, I know that when we look back at this day, we'll fondly remember the wonderful times that we had in medical school here at UT Southwestern. I am truly honored to be able to work with such selfless and such talented individuals, and I wish you all the best of luck. Hi everyone, I wanted to start off by thanking the faculty for the time and energy that they've dedicated to my education and training. I also wanted to thank my family, and most importantly my fiance Destiny, for all the love and support that they've given me throughout the past four years. Finally, I'm grateful for all the friendships that I've made during this time, and I wish you all the best of luck in the years to come.
Congratulations, everyone. I'm in disbelief that med school is ending. Our grade is like one big family that's been through so many experiences together. We witnessed harsh debates in the TBL space over questions. We studied to no end during Dedicated, and we cried over some of the saddest patient cases during clerkships. Despite these tough experiences, we became resilient. We formed the most solid friendships, and we shared laughs together every day. Throughout these last four years, if there's anything I've learned besides all the medicine, it's that the most important thing is the people you're surrounded with. And I'm so grateful to have been surrounded by you guys, the class of 2020, and the faculty and the family who have supported us along the way. Thank you again for everything, and I hope to see you all again sometime soon. Hi, I just want to say big thank you to everyone who was involved in our education at UT Southwestern. The deans, the faculty, the doctors that helped us in the hospitals, and all the accessory medical staff. We couldn't have done it without you guys. Also, a big special shout out to the matriculating class of 2015. For those of you that had a research year, pursued master's degrees, or even had unforeseen circumstances, I'm especially proud of you guys. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. We made it. Even though our fourth year didn't turn out quite like we hoped, uh, I'm still so excited to begin residency with y'all. I can't think of a better group to start working with, especially during a time when compassionate clinicians are so needed. I hope everyone stays physically, mentally, and spiritually well, and uh, look forward to getting all of your psychiatry consults. Congrats, class. Um, yeah. I didn't realize everyone was going to be all dressed up for these videos. So, I'm over here looking like a Colombian drug lord. Um, anyways, but um, I want to say congrats to you guys. And I have a good quote here I think you guys will like from my dog eating Che Guevara book. Um, he says, The pride of serving our fellow man is much more important than a good income that the people's gratitude is much more permanent, much more lasting than all the gold one can accumulate. Each doctor in the sphere of their activity can and should accumulate that prized treasure, the people's gratitude. Congratulations on finishing medical school. It's been a really fun four years with you guys. Um, best of luck with starting residency, and I hope we get to all see each other again soon. Hey everybody, um, for those that haven't met, my name is Daniel Beecham, I'm going into pediatrics. Uh, and I just want to say how wonderful it's been um, for both myself and my wife and daughter to be a part of the UT Southwestern family. Um, I'm very thankful for the teachers and administrators who've been part of our journey and uh, for the patients that we've taken care of. And it's just been an honor to work alongside each and every person in the class of 2020. Um, this is an amazing class and I'm just very thankful and humbled to be a part of it. Hi everyone, I'm Eve Sharifi. I want to sincerely thank all of my classmates and mentors at UC Southwestern for the most enjoyable time these past four years. I'm really going to miss everyone and I know that the relationships that I've made are going to make me a better and more compassionate doctor in the future. I especially want to thank Dr. Brancaccio, Dr. Holmes, Dr. Dogan, Dr. Chabra, and Dr. Bishop for their amazing mentorship. I definitely wouldn't have gotten to where I am without your amazing guidance. I sincerely thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Hey guys, Finn here. I just want to thank you all for making uh, my medical experience, school experience especially meaningful and memorable. Uh, I am really honestly humbled to be a part of such a brilliant, generous, and a warm-hearted class. And I'm really uh, excited to take on this career with everyone. Um, so with that, I just want to say congratulations and best of luck to our next steps. Congratulations on completing medical school. First, I'd like to thank all the administration, faculty, and my research mentors for making medical school an amazing learning experience. I'd also like to thank my friends and family for making the last four years memorable and for providing me support. I wish everyone success during residency and in their future careers. Thank you. Hey everybody, I 
am so excited that after these four wild years, we finally made it to this point, and I am so proud of everything that we've all accomplished. Um, special shout out to my fellow class goers, the ones who are still going to lecture at the end of Brain and Behavior. Um, these Zoom learning environments have been a little challenging for us, I'm sure. Um, but I have made some of the, the greatest friends here, and it has been such a privilege to learn alongside each and every one of you. I, I can't wait for reunion when we'll finally get back together and really celebrate everything that we've accomplished. I love you guys. I'll miss you. Hi, my sweet friends. Um, I sure did not expect the end of our fourth year to look the way that it has, but I will say it's given me a lot of time to reflect. Um, the last four years have been filled with ups, a lot, a lot of ups, but some downs too, and I I'm so thankful that it's you guys that I got to go through this hard thing with. I'm already looking forward to a few years down the road when I hear about all the wonderful things y'all are up to and I get to claim you as one of my former classmates. Um, it's a bummer that we don't get to celebrate together in person right now, but know that I'm celebrating you from afar and I hope that one of these days that we'll be able to celebrate together in person. So I'm sending you guys all my love. Happy graduation. Congratulations to the class of 2020. We finally made it. I wanna thank everyone who welcomed me to the class with open arms. I wanna say especially thanks to UT Southwestern from the scrub techs who yelled at me for breaking sterile field to all of the faculty and mentors who have helped me along the way. And to those who matriculated with me in 2015, I'm so glad that we were able to finish together. And I'm so excited to see where everyone um, goes and what, what everyone does in the future. I'm sure we'll all make our, our um, own impacts. Congratulations, class of 2020. I want to take a quick moment to thank my family, friends, colleagues, and mentors who've helped me through my medical school journey and wish everyone well as we get started in uh, this upcoming intern year. I've never been more grateful and more proud to be part of this profession. Medical school for the class of 2020 was definitely a trip the entire way, starting year one with anatomy up until now. But every single one of my classmates has handled each step of the way with the utmost class, the utmost optimism. And so I'm extremely proud to be a member of the class of 2020. And that's why it hurts a lot not being with y'all today, celebrating our accomplishments. Uh, but no one can take that away from us, the late nights, uh, the hard work. So I'm really proud of y'all, and I hope that y'all are all ready for the ED consoles and the ED admits that I'm going to send your way. So I just wanted to take a couple of seconds to thank my family, my friends, and the class of 2020. What an amazing four years it's been. We've been through a lot together, whether it be, be like formaldehyde poisoning or a global pandemic where we don't graduate. It's We've all been through it together, and without you guys, work hard, play hard would not have been possible. Um, to my mom, my dad, and my sister, thank you guys for pushing me when I needed it. Without you, I would not have become a doctor. Um, and to the medical administration. Thank you guys for being the mentors that we need for putting all of this together and for making um, UT Southwestern such an amazing medical school experience. Happy graduation and congratulations to the class of 2020. It's been such a great four years being classmates with all of you guys and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you guys. I know we're all gonna go on and to do really great things. Good luck in residency. I wish we could celebrate together, but it's been a great four years, and I've been so blessed to be classmates with you guys. Congratulations again. Congratulations, class of 2020. Y'all, we did it. First and foremost, thank you to God. Without him, none of this would be possible. Thank you to my family and friends, my mentors, the deans, and my amazing diversity and inclusion family. This has been one heck of an experience, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Thank you for the many memories and friendships that will last a lifetime. I am forever grateful. Congrats, class of 2020. We did it, and I'm so proud of us. The current situation has given me a lot of time, maybe too much time, to really think about our journey to this point. And there is no one else I would have rather spent it with. 
The last four years, I've gained the best friends, amazing mentors, and so many good memories, and a lot of lessons learned as well. So I'm so proud of all of us. Congratulations to us for getting to this point. And in the future, may your virtual hats fly as high as your dreams. Good luck, class of 2020. Hey class, happy graduation. I wanted to thank y'all for making it so dang hard to say goodbye. I've had a wonderful four years with y'all and I hope to stay in touch. I'm really excited to see what everyone does and, and then we better have a real good reunion. Happy graduation, everyone. I wish that we could all be together to celebrate today, um, but it's been such a blessing and an inspiration to have spent the last four years in medical school with you all. I wish you guys nothing but the best for residency and beyond. Congrats. Hey, class of 2020, Oswaldo and Maria here. Congratulations, we're officially doctors. At this time, we would like to thank everyone that has helped us along the way. We'd like to thank all the faculty and mentors that have helped us in our journey. Thank you to our friends and family for their support. Y especialmente muchísimas gracias a nuestros padres. Este logro también es de ustedes. Sí, sí se, se pudo. pudo. Hello and congratulations to everyone in the class of 2020 on graduating and a special thank you to my advisors and mentors who've got me to where I am now. First of all, congratulations. We finally made it to this day. There were times I wasn't sure, but I'm so excited that we did, and I feel like we are better for it. Um, There's so many people I want to thank, um, especially you know the friends that I made both in medical school and in college. I feel like those bonds we made in pressure will last forever. I'm so grateful for my family um, and for my fiance for being there for quite a bit. So thank you, I love you guys, and good luck to all my classmates. Hello, friends. I'd like to thank everyone, faculty and staff, for an incredible four years and the privilege I had to train here. I wish everyone best of luck in their future endeavors, and hopefully I see you all around. Hello, my friends. Congrats on being doctors. We did it. I'm so proud of us and so grateful that I had the opportunity to learn alongside you these last four years. So thank you for so many wonderful memories. Um, I'm sorry if I shushed you via microphone at any point and looking forward to see all the great things we end up doing. Hi everyone. Kelly's and my favorite part of medical school was where I got voted class pet parent by all of my classmates. It was such an honor. Uh, if you guys ever need any cute cat photos moving forward, you know who to call. I wish you all the best of luck in residency and I can't wait to see what you guys all do. Hi y'all, my name is Bailey Shepard and I just want to take a minute to say thank you to my classmates, my mentors, and really anyone who's played a role in my training during the last four years here. I've had so many great memories here and I hope to represent UT Southwestern well as I move forward with my anesthesiology training. I would like to especially shout out to Dr. Woods, Dr. Embarticar, and Dr. Celestio. Y'all are amazing role models for women in medicine and I hope to make y'all proud. Hey guys, it's Tim and Manny here. I just wanted to say thanks to all my friends, uh, the entire medical school class, and all of our faculty and staff for making the past four years such an enjoyable experience. I really have had a great time and I hope everybody else has as well. I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody does in residency, so thanks. I'm a strong believer in the idea that experiences are made meaningful because of the people you have them with. And my medical school experience was most definitely made meaningful because of the class of 2020. And even though this is our graduation, it doesn't mean goodbye. I can't wait to see all the things that y'all do, and I can't wait to see our friendships grow as we do. Congrats, y'all. We did it. And more importantly, we did it together.
Class of 2020, congratulations. It has really been a joy and an honor to go through these four years with you. I have been incredibly inspired and challenged and supported by all the gifts and talents and personalities that we have. Um, it's just really been a lot of fun. My hope for us is that we keep these vibrant parts of ourselves alive moving forward so we can continue to be part of really amazing things in residency and beyond. So thank you so much to our faculty as well for really making these last four years mean something. This was great, guys. Good luck. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I would like to thank the ENT department for their unending support, resources, and mentorship with which they provided my colleagues and me throughout this entire arduous process of applying into residency. I would like to thank Drs. Ashley Halderman, Ashley Egan, Larry Myers, Romaine Johnson, Brandon Isaacson, and Bradley Marple for their unending mentorship and support throughout this process. I aspire to pass on this same mentorship to future otolaryngologists. Thank you.
Congratulations, Class of 2020. My name is Amanda Billings. I'm the Vice President of Development and Alumni Relations here at UT Southwestern. I have been in awe of how all of you have come together and have shown such incredible strength and resilience in the face of adversity. It is my great honor to welcome you into the UT Southwestern Medical School alumni community, a network of more than 15,000 distinguished physicians across the nation. Susie and Dr. Mahalik will be sending you a care package soon, which will include your official UT Southwestern alumni pin. I hope you wear it with pride. And now my colleague Troy will share a little more information about all of the great things we have in store for you as a UT Southwestern alumnus. Congratulations. Thank you, Amanda. My name is Troy Odom. I'm Senior Director for Engagement and Participation here at UT Southwestern. Congratulations on graduating. I'm so honored to welcome you to the UT Southwestern alumni family. I also want to invite you to stay engaged with your alma mater. In a packet you will be sent, you'll find a Stay Connected card inviting you to join Alumni LinkedIn and our alumni Facebook pages. Please be on the lookout for alumni newsletters, as well as updates from UT Southwestern. Check in on the Alumni Engage website to hear about alumni events coming near you, such as our Connect Alumni events. You will also find instructions how to sign up for your lifelong email address. And please especially be on the lookout for future volunteer opportunities, such as bed and breakfast and day with a doctor programs where you can pay it forward to the next generation of doctors. Also, we'll see you at your first reunion. We promise it'll be a good time. We're incredibly proud of you, and congratulations and welcome to the alumni community. My name is Neil Youngblood, class of 82. Charles Dickens famously wrote in the opening line for his book, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. That line is the perfect metaphor for this extraordinary day of joy in these very troubling times. Take in the moment, appreciate and recognize what you've accomplished, but understand the enormous responsibility you have to serve others. My advice to you is to give voice and understanding to those who don't have the visibility you have. Give voice to the nurses, to the respiratory therapists, to the x-ray technicians, to the porters, to the housekeepers, but ultimately to patients. I did my internship in surgery and then my residence in emergency medicine and practiced emergency medicine for 12 years before founding a private equity firm focused in the healthcare service sector where I serve as chairman and CEO. Medicine provides an enormous possibility to serve in multiple different areas. I challenge you to serve others and by doing so, lead. Congratulations on your graduation and welcome to the Alumni Network. Good afternoon, graduates of the class of 2020. As you graduate today, you are entering a profession that incites your intellect, engages your sense of achievement, and promotes you to a new level of influence. My sincere wish for each of you is that you will remember that this profession calls your soul to the service of others, particularly for those who are less fortunate. Service does not come from the intellect, Service emanates from the heart, which is why I'm wearing red today. I encourage all of you to keep your heart in medicine. The world needs your heart. Congratulations and welcome to medicine. Congratulations, class of 2020. What a wonderful day. I hope that you can look back on everything you've accomplished and done so far and really revel in it and enjoy it today. I also just want to say, you may not have considered it, you may not have even thought about it, but yes, you are our future leaders, our future leaders of our communities and of medicine. And as our future leaders, I'd just like to leave you with a few things. Remember that the best leaders are not the ones that lead for the recognition or the power. The best leaders are the ones that lead to serve a greater calling, and I hope that you always serve the greater calling of taking care of the patient first. And then if I could leave you with just one solistiosum, just one, do the best you can do, that's all you can do. But after you've done the best that you can do, pull a frozen and let it go. 
That's right, friends. Pull up frozen and let it go. Congratulations. All my best. Live your Hippocratic Oath every day that you practice medicine from me. My dear colleagues, first, congratulations. You should be so proud of this incredible accomplishment. You have memorized an encyclopedia of information, danced your heart out in the multicultural show, thrown countless dodgeballs, ate way too much free pizza, cared for hundreds of patients in a volunteer capacity, as well as in our hospitals and clinics, delivered a host of babies, held the hands of patients and families in their greatest hour of need, pulled together to support your friends through the low points and cheered each other on during victories, all while surviving a new curriculum and enduring a worldwide pandemic. Wow, here's a victory you can all celebrate. Congratulations, you are doctors. Thank you for allowing me to enjoy this incredible journey with you. It's really remarkable to think back on pre-op and realize how much you have grown in wisdom, confidence, clinical judgment, and empathy. You have each made a lasting mark on UT Southwestern and on my life. As you look forward to residency, it may not surprise you that the imposter syndrome creeps back. Have I fooled them? Do I really know enough? Am I really ready to officially sign those orders and be responsible for patients? The answer is yes, you are ready. Remember, it is more important of who you are than what you know. If you are caring, compassionate, and committed to your patients, you will be happy and adored by them. If you're willing to look something up, dedicate yourself to lifelong learning, and go the extra mile to ease the suffering of others, you will have truly succeeded. Pull out that personal statement you wrote for medical school. Remember your awe and wonder. Remember the dreams of what kind of physician you wanted to become. You have worked incredibly hard. Now go out and be that person you wrote about. I am so proud of all that you have become. Godspeed.